Hey everyone, let's take a look at the commands that are available to us for when we want to deploy our application using Nuxt and the differences between target server and target static. So in our documentation, we have a page commands and deployment and you will see we have four commands available to us. We have dev, build, start and generate. Now the dev command, you probably all know, and that's to launch Nuxt in development mode with hot module replacement on localhost 3000. And you can run that using yarn dev or npm run dev. Now there's a list of commands available to us depending on the target. And we have two targets, target server and target static. Target server is when we want to host our application on Node.js hosting, such as Heroku, DigitalOcean, etc. And target static, is when we want to host our application on hosting for static services such as Netlify, Versal, Surge, Azure Static Web Apps, GitHub Pages, etc. And the commands are a little bit different. With target server, we have the dev command, the build command, and the start command. With target static, we have the dev command, the generate command, and the start command. Let's have a look at the commands in action. So I have in my Nux config target server. Now this is exactly the same as just having nothing because the default value is server. So I'm gonna leave it here, but if you have nothing, then you've basically got target server. So I want to build my application for production. So I'm gonna use the command yarn build. This will run my Nux build command. And what it will do is it will do a production build bundling for server and client side using Webpack with the target of server. So as you can see now, it's got all this Webpack bundling has been done and it tells me it's ready to run Nuxt start. So I can run yarn start. And what this will do is it will give me a production environment with the rendering server side, the target server. And I can then see my application on localhost 3000. But this is, and I've just printed this out so we can see it with target server, this is my application. So I can you know, check it out before I deploy it, make sure it's okay. And then once it's ready, I can say, yep, great, ready to deploy. So what's going on in my folder structure here is that it's actually created a .nuxt folder. Now the .nuxt folder is what Nuxt uses to build the application. And there's a lot of things going on in here, such as, let me just make this a little smaller. The rooter.js file is here for creating the roots. There's a disk folder with a client and server bundles and some pages in here and you know we can look in this and it's basically what webpack is using to build up um that production environment that, that website it's ready to be built and that's what uh nuxt is using to build that so we don't really have to understand what's going on in here we just have to know that it's there and that this is you this is rebuilt every single time so this is going to get built we can um delete this and it's not an issue, it's not a problem because anytime we run that command, uh, yarn build, it's gonna be built again, okay? The same with the dev command, it's gonna be built with the dev command or with the yarn build command. So you don't have to uh, worry about it too much. You just have to know that it's there. And that's basically target server. So let's have a look at target static and see the differences. So if we put target static in our Nux config, and then let's go over here and we'll stop this and we'll use the generate command. Let's just clear that to make it a bit cleaner. So with the generate command, it's a little bit different to build because we have generate. But if you run uh, the build command, it's gonna say ready to run yarn generate because the generate command actually builds your application first. So it's gonna build my application. And as you can see, the Webpack bundling has gone on here. Now I never change my target in my index page. So I can do that again. Uh, I can do that very quickly and rebuild it. So in my pages, let's just quickly change this to target static. There we go. And we'll rebuild that again. It'll only take a second. And while that's doing that, I'm just gonna show you what was created. So the disk folder is what gets created here. And you'll see I've got no .nux folder anymore because I deleted it. So the generate command builds the dist folder. And you can see here, it's doing um, the webpack bundling here. And you'll see with the target of static 
And you'll see down here then it generated an output directory of dist, that's fantastic. And it generated all these roots for me. And I can still run yarn start to see a production uh, environment with target static. And we should now see, there we go, there's my target static that's been changed, right? I just changed that a second ago and you can see that that works perfect. Now what's going on in my disk folder? So in my disk folder, I have a folder with a name for every single mountain. I've got a mountains page. If I look in here, I'm just gonna move this over a little bit. You can see I have static content with all this text, right? So different to the Nooks folder where I had all that Webpack thing going on, I've now got all static text and I can look Mount Everest and I've got all this information about Mount Everest. Now, where did all these mountains come from? So let's have a look at our pages. And as you can see here, I've got a mountains page, an index.view page, and an underscore mountain.view page. And this page is a dynamic page. Uh, because it's got the underscore, it's a dynamic page. That's uh, what it's doing is it's getting all the mountains depending on the param. And that's what's gonna give me all these mountain pages are created because of this dynamic page. And what's happening here, the mountains page, because there's a link to it, the crawler is gonna crawl all those dynamic pages and it's gonna generate for me a page for every single one of these mountains. So that's kind of really, really cool because I didn't have to do anything in my Nux config to get that. I didn't do anything at all and it generated all these mountains for me and all those mountains coming from an API generated for me and I didn't do anything, great. So what we can do is, uh, you can see here, um, I'm serving from dist, right? Now I wanna deploy my application. So how would I deploy my application? I'm just gonna stop that for a second. And there are a couple of easy, there's a load of ways, but I'm gonna show you two really, really quickly. Uh, one of them is using surge. So I can just go surge dist once I've installed it. And what it's gonna do is it's going to uh, deploy that. So it asks me if this one is okay. I'm like, yeah, that one's fine. So a bit of an ugly one, I could have changed it. Um, and I've now got breakable bit.surge.sh. So I copy this. I now should see my application with target static because I wrote target static. Let's have a look. But um, yes, and there we have it deployed on this beautiful URL, breakable bit surge.sh. So that was really cool. That was very fast and that was really easy to do. And there's another way, I'm gonna show you another way. And what we can do is if we click on here and we say uh, reveal in Finder, um, I'll then find out, it's on another screen, but I've got that dist folder. And then what I can do is I can go to Netlify and just um, under sites, down at the very bottom, there's a deploy, a drag and drop way of deploying. And I can just drag that dist folder. You can see it here, yeah. Dragging that dist, I'm dropping it. And what that is gonna do is, it has not been deployed. Okay, don't worry. It's gonna start. You can see I'm deploying my site here and I can set up a custom domain if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna use this, um, this crazy one because it's fine for this example. And there I have on Netlify, um, this mystifying pasture or whatever, .netlify app, I have my application deployed in seconds. So that's the great benefits there of deploying the disk folder. It's very, very quick and easy. And um, there are the main differences when running um, your application with target server and target static, just make sure in your Nux config to change between these two. Target static, target, ser uh, target st server, and then you can deploy depending on uh, what your target is. So yeah, really, really simple. Don't forget it's all in the documentation if you need to brush up on the list of commands. And that's pretty much it. I hope that makes a lot of sense and makes it easier for when you're deploying your applications. Thank you very much, bye.